The following program contains strong sexual content. Viewer discretion is advised. Today on an all new Dr. Phil. Your son fathered a baby with an 11 year old child. The shocking story. Lisa knew Hope was pregnant and was hiding it. I had no idea. Of a preteen mom. What made you think about having sex in the sixth grade? What were the parents thinking? They don't want to take blame for this happening. We're being treated as criminals. Are you kidding me? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. Take We're going to get you the help that you need. Five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Well, with the popularity of TV shows like 16 and Pregnant and Teen Mom, we've all become familiar with and perhaps slightly desensitized to the perils of teen pregnancy. In fact, to many, it may no longer seem shocking to see a virtual baby pushing her baby in a stroller. Well, I'm gonna test that theory today because I think you are gonna be shocked. Because the young mother you're about to meet was not 16. She wasn't 15. She wasn't 14. She wasn't 13. She wasn't even 12. She was 11. Yeah, you heard me right. I said that she was pregnant at 11. Now, she's 12 years old and the mother of this beautiful baby girl. Before we get started, I want to introduce all the players in this preteen baby drama. First, I want you to meet Hope. She is little baby Ashlyn's 12-year-old mother. Next, I want you to meet Bailey. He's the 14-year-old father. Now, Hope's parents are Lisa and Matt. The boy's parents are Sharon and Rod. Now, Lisa and Matt aren't together anymore, and he has a new fiance, Kayla. So she seems to be the only one in the bunch that is wondering, what's going on here? Because she's the one that wrote to me saying, help. How did this happen? That's the question. How did an 11-year-old get pregnant? Well, her mom, Lisa, says she didn't know her baby was carrying a baby until Christmas Eve last year. Now, Sharon and Kayla, on the other hand, say Lisa knew about the pregnancy. She just knew about it. Take a look. Hope had conceived Ashlyn when she was 11 and had Ashlyn two months after her 12th birthday. Ashlyn weighed two pounds, 12 ounces. Hope got up off the couch and her shirt had come up and I noticed that her belly was protruding out. There was a dark stripe up her tummy that women get when they're pregnant. I was thinking, oh my gosh, is this really happening? Hope started crying and she admitted to me they had had sex. We did a pregnancy test that night. We found out on Christmas Eve that my daughter Hope was pregnant. Hope had never even gotten her period. I remember screaming and yelling, how could this happen? Matt was devastated. He was shocked. He was almost in tears. And when he told me, I almost started crying as well. Most people in our hometown blame Lisa for Hope having a baby at 12. We've gotten a text from Lisa saying that Hope was pregnant in October. The very next day, Lisa sent my husband a text saying she'd taken her to the doctor and she wasn't pregnant. Bailey was happy we finally knew that Hope was pregnant because he'd been hiding it for quite a while. Lisa told Bailey that Hope's father would kill him, and Lisa told Hope that we would hate her. That's why these kids kept it a secret. Everyone blames me for this pregnancy because she was living with me. She's my daughter. I had absolutely no idea that Hope was even pregnant. I had no idea Hope was having sex. I guess we were stupid parents. I thought they were just friends. There's no doubt in my mind that Lisa knew Hope was pregnant and was hiding it. Uh, okay, I'm, um, 
I'm a little speechless here. Are, 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 what's your reaction to this? You're saying everybody's blaming you. Let's forget about who's responsible. What's your reaction to the fact that your daughter at 11 was pregnant? I was completely shocked that she was pregnant. I had no idea that she was having sex, had no idea she was even thinking about having sex. How far along was she before you say you knew it? She was six months. So you're telling me you had an 11 year old daughter six months pregnant before you knew it? Yes. And you're the baby's father's mother. Yes. Your son fathered a baby with an 11 year old child. What do you think about that? I think it's horrible. Are you kidding me? He's having sex with an 11 year old child. What did you say to him when you found out about this? What were you thinking doing something like that? My husband and I, we preached at him about having sex, you know, not that it, was, it would be okay, but letting him know what could happen if he had sex, because it, it only takes one time, we told him, so. Uh -huh. you, you wrote the letter. Correct. Why? Um, because I'm just, I'm sick of everyone going back and forth and fighting with each other, and I think it needs to be resolved with a mediator. Where, where's the baby? Who's raising this baby? Uh, my sister. And why is she raising the baby? Um, because that's where uh, CPS had her placed. We had asked her before Hope had the baby um, if she could take her. Uh -huh. And what did CPS say to you about your mothering? They thought that I had pulled Hope out of school mm -hmm. um, to cover the pregnancy. Did they, they have any issues with 11-year-old child getting pregnant on your watch? Um, they bring that up when they were chatting with you? Not really. The thing that they came down on me for was Hope's behavior being out of control and me not doing anything about it sooner. Are, are you a suitable mother? I think I am. There are those that say that you condoned her getting pregnant. You contribute to it or condoned it. I did. Um, and here, here's why. That she gets pregnant while on your watch. Lisa let Hope do anything she wanted to do, according to uh, Matt. Lisa let Hope sleep at Bailey's house, according to Kayla. Is that true? Hope did stay with Bailey's sister. And Bailey? Yes. Look, you're either here to get help or you're here to cover your own ass. You, you can't do both. I want to get help for my daughter. Well, because I just said, they, they just too. said that, that you were allowing her to stay at Bailey's house. You said, at his sister's. You I trying did, to deflect the fact no, that she was staying over there with Bailey? I did not know at the time that Bailey and Hope were even dating. Kayla says that you let Hope watch sexually explicit movies. No, I do not. Is that true or false? Yes, that is true. You did I, say it. Yes, I did. That is not true. And the reason why they were, they were watching Hope at my house. So if she was watching those shows at my house, they put them on for her. Well, um... Sharon says that you talked about Hope's pregnancy like it was just no big deal. What's no, everybody upset I did not. About? That you didn't notice changes in her body. I, I mean, that is true. I did not notice. Yes, you did. If they noticed, they should have done something. I told you that I noticed Hope's belly getting bigger and her boobs are getting bigger as well. And you said, oh, my God, I noticed that. They too. said you started homeschooling her two months before the pregnancy became official. So they say you did that to hide it. No, I ho already homeschooled my oldest daughter. And I pulled Hope out of school because she kept leaving the school. They said you texted Rod, who's your husband, Bailey's father? Yes. Um, texted him saying, Hope is pregnant. Next day, text, text and said, Doc said not pregnant. Two months before claim, no, before I, you claimed to I have known No, I texted it. them in December and let them know. No, that was in October. Hey, listen, somebody's not telling the truth here. And, Lisa. you know, that's, that's 10 minutes of my life I can't get back. We're going to take a break. And you guys are going to decide that you're either going to tell the truth here or we're done. So why was 911 called the morning of Hope's delivery? We may get the answer to that. We may not. We'll be right back. Hope got up to go 
to the bathroom and started hemorrhaging. We did not know she was in labor until we got to the hospital. Hope almost died, and no one was really sure if Ashton was going to make it. I sat Hope down when she was 11 and had the sex talk with her and talked to her about appropriate and inappropriate touching. I told Hope that she should wait until she's married to have sex. Hope told me to shut up and that she didn't want to have that talk. She was very embarrassed and just kept telling me whatever, whatever, whatever. Rod and I sat Bailey down and talked to him about, you know, what could happen if you have sex. And he's like, ew, yuck. Well, I'm trying to talk to a family that I think is in crisis over a young girl, Hope, who got pregnant at 11. I may be the only one that thinks this constitutes a crisis for a number of people. The baby, Ashlyn, was born 11 weeks premature. She weighed two pounds, 12 ounces at birth. Take a look. The night before Hope delivered, she said she had a tummy ache. Hope got up to go to the bathroom and started hemorrhaging. We called 911. We did not know she was in labor until we got to the hospital. When Lisa had called us to let us know that Hope was going into labor, we immediately got ready to leave. I wasn't going to go. Kayla talked me into going up there and supporting my daughter. I didn't want Hope to keep the baby. I didn't feel Hope was ready to be a mother. She's a child herself. Hope had the baby within 25 minutes of us getting to the hospital. She had an emergency C-section. I opted not to be in the room because I didn't want to see my daughter going through that at her age. I got a call from Lisa, and she said that they were taking Hope to the hospital. Matt picked up Bailey and drove him up there. Both Bailey and Hope were crying. The mood at the hospital was very sad and gloomy because Hope almost died and no one was really sure if Ashton was going to make it. She was so tiny, I thought that she was going to die, so they were both very upset. Your daughter continues to be at risk. Your son is at risk. And so what I'm trying to do is figure out, is there anything here to build on? And to do that, you got to be honest about how we got in this situation. Now, it said you texted, and you said, no, I didn't. Well, you either did or you didn't. I asked you if she was staying with, with Bailey. And Bailey said, well, at his sister's house. That's not an honest answer. That's a lie by omission. I, I want to know how we got here. Are, are you willing to tell me the truth? Yeah. Have you been telling me the truth? Yes. Okay, so you didn't send that text. No, I did not. Rod, did you yes. get that text? Yes, I did get that text. Okay. Now, how is that possible? How did you get it and you didn't send it? I, I is don't he know. lying? Yes. So I, he's lying. He just he just I lied. I know I got the text because my heart sunk. I mean, when you get a text <clears throat> like that, information like that, I mean, it. you remember it. it. Did you get a text 24 hours later that said false alarm? Uh, yes, I did. Pretty much false alarm. So it was like, okay, you know, um, we'll turn to normal. Why and would it he did lie turn, about that? return to normal. I don't know, because they don't like me. That's hmm. false. They don't want to take blame for this happening. I mean, it's all of our faults. You might be wondering to yourselves, where on earth does an 11-year-old and a 13-year-old, where would they be able to hide out to have sex and, and conceive without being caught in the act? We're talking about children here. Well, we asked their parents, and not one seemed to have a clear answer. Take a look. I've been very concerned about Hope and Bailey being left alone and possibly having sex at Matt's house. Well, they weren't having sex at my house. I've heard all kinds of stories. In a public restroom by a walking trail, I've heard they've had sex under the bridge and in the trees in the woods, down at the skate park. I read Hope's Facebook message to Bailey, and it said that she wanted to have more fun times underneath the bleachers and underneath the bridge. She also told Bailey that the sex was like, wow. That makes me feel that they were having sex in random places. 
Where did this happen? Where, where did they have this? I heard under a bridge. That's what I was told by my grandson, who Bailey confided in. Mm -hmm. what, what, what did you hear? Um, what Kayla had heard. I mean, she told me what Hope's Facebook had said. Well, here's a big shocker. They're now fighting over custody of this baby and trying to keep their kids apart to prevent another pregnancy. We're going to talk about that when we come back. Who do I want to have custody? Not that family. I would like to see my sister raise Ashlyn. She can provide a mom and a dad in a stable home, and I would like to see that. I have heard that Hope wants to have another baby with Bailey because she believes that the state will let her keep this one. Hope is boy crazy. Despite her wanting to be with Bailey, she's still infatuated with other boys as well. Hope likes to say that boys are hot or that she wants to marry them. She is so aggressive with boys. She was at the school one time and she started grabbing one of the boys' butts at the dance. Well, that was Lisa talking about her 12-year-old daughter, Hope's infatuation and inappropriate behavior with boys. This baby was placed not with you, even though you are the grandmother That's right. of the baby. Did they say why they would not entrust you with the baby? Because I had an open CPS case because of Hope being pregnant. Dr. Jennifer Berman uh, is here. And she received her medical degree from Boston University School of Medicine. She completed her postgraduate urology residency training at the University of Maryland and received specialized fellowship training in female urology and female pelvic floor reconstruction surgery at UCLA Medical Center. Uh, she's also one of the newest doctors on my son Jay's show called The Doctors. Um, so, Dr. Jennifer, first, let's talk about this 11-year-old having a baby. So, in terms of, um, you know, teenage pregnancies, and in this case, this is a preteen, being able to carry a baby to term, it, it's really <clears throat> unlikely. And, and difficult, and that's why most of these babies are preterm. There's a higher risk of uh, prenatal complications, fetal death, and birth defects. And that's clearly what happened in this case. She was having preterm labor and preterm delivery, which puts baby and mom at risk. Her, her, her body just couldn't hold it. No. Okay. Much less deliver. Most of these babies in teenagers and preteens deliver by C-section because they cannot, for one, carry, much less deliver vaginally. It puts, you know, it's incredible stress on the spine, the pelvic floor, the vagina, the bladder, the urethra. It's physiologically very difficult. How important would prenatal care be if you're 11 years old and pregnant? Prenatal care is extremely important because, in particular, related to bone uh, demineralization. Hope is a child, so she's still growing, and the fetus, the ba carrying a baby, leaches calcium from from the bone. So the baby can be deficient of vitamins and minerals, and um, Hope as well. Even now, that's one thing. As moms, the mom, the you are. You know, Lisa, mom of a child, it is your responsibility to make sure that she's taking multivitamins and multiminerals. So, you know, the next thing that'll happen in one of these dramas or fights, she ends up falling, breaking an arm or a hip, hope, because she is at risk for, right. well, and then ends up on pain pills, and then, you know, we got a whole other problem. Did you take her for prenatal care or not? Yes, I took her to, there is, I had to take her to our doctor in town. Her medical, she has to have a referral. I wanted her to have a referral to a specialist. The doctor I did take her to had delivered babies for 30 years, 40 years, and... Did he see her? Yes. He yes. evaluated her? He evaluated her, and then they had me come back three hours later, and they did an ultrasound to make sure everything was okay internally. Mm -hmm. Did he offer you instructions and assistance in terms of prenatal vitamins? And yes, assistance? we got prenatal vitamins that day. Mm -hmm. By that point, it's a little late. You know, the, the fetal brain development is way earlier. Folic acid is really important, so that's why birth <clears throat> defects, neural tube defects well, are really... Dr. Jennifer, let me put up a list of the premature baby health <clears throat> risks here, because I think you're saying that because she didn't have some of this stuff, she's at risk, but I mean, it, it fills up the entire page here. Uh, apnea, anemia, autism, uh, bronchopulmonary 
uh, dysplasia, cerebral palsy. I mean, it just goes on. Jaundice, meningitis, pneumonia, vision and hearing. This, this is a high-risk child, right? Yeah. Not only was it delivered by an 11-year-old, but it was uh, 2 pounds, 12 ounces. W what does that mean for the baby's risk? Not all preterm babies end up being compromised. In this case, due to you know the lack of prenatal care and the home environment that the baby's going to return to potentially, that's more concerning than, than the baby being preterm. We've got to take a break. So if hope is still boy crazy, is that going to lead to more babies? Do they have any idea what it takes to raise a child? We're going to talk about that. I think the numbers are pretty sobering. We'll be right back. talking about Hope, who was only 11 years old when she got pregnant by her boyfriend, Bailey. Now, by the way, you're probably wondering, how is this not rape of a child? Well, in most states, including this state, uh, there is a difference in age that defines whether it's rape or not. And in this state, a person is guilty of rape of a child in the first degree when the person has sexual intercourse with another who is less than 12 years old and not married to the perpetrator, and the perpetrator is at least 24 months older than the victim. So here, your son was 17 months older than Hope, so he missed committing a Class A felony by seven months. Um, now, Hope's seven-month-old baby, Ashlyn, has been temporarily placed with one of her aunts. Sharon, Bailey's mom, says that ultimately she would like for her family to control custody of her granddaughter, Ashlyn. Take a look. Who do I want to have custody? Not that family. Well, Lisa's family has all the rights, and Rod and I can only see Ashlyn for five or ten minutes here and there. We feel like we're being treated as criminal for a mistake that my son made. Not sure that I could raise Ashlyn by myself with Hope being the way that she is. I would like to see my sister raise Ashlyn. She can provide a mom and a dad and a stable home for Ashlyn, and I would like to see that. So if at all possible, we would take her because she's part of our family, no matter how she got here. Well, you you want custody. I would like if I couldn't, I have. A daughter-in-law and a son that's 37 who are would be willing to raise her so it's not just me I'm sorry I will not let that happen well I'm sure it's not up to you but why not if it was because they can't take care of the one they got now neither can you right that's why I'm not I'm stepping up and saying I can you know she's talking about having another baby is that right I had never heard that no I heard that rumor I did what what's your reaction to that um, that's shocking to me with what she went through, but... That shocks you, but the other one... No, it shocked me, but she's just so out of control with everything. Her anger, she's physically assaults <clears throat> people, she, she doesn't care who she's talking to. She will scream and yell and cuss, and if she's not getting what she wants, she will threaten you. That's just the way she's doing things. So you've lost control. Yes. You, you, you're, you, you admit you are totally out of control with this girl. Yes. You have no ability to keep her from getting pregnant again? I, no. <clears throat> you, you have no ability to parent her or mother her? Nope. So you're just out. Who's going to pay for this baby? Uh, if you're curious, new numbers are just out. The cost of raising a child born in 2012 until the age of 18 is right at a quarter of a million dollars. And uh, that's before college, by the way. The cost varies depending on geography. In Washington, where Hope and Bailey live, the cost is over $250,000 to raise Ashland according to USDA estimates. So somebody here is going to be looking at having to come up with a quarter of a million dollars to raise this baby. 
Um, Bailey and Hope are backstage. Uh, they haven't been watching any of the show. Their parents have been trying their best to keep the kids separated. But if it's okay with the parents, and I have to have their permission to do it, uh, I'm going to go backstage and and talk to them. Is that anybody have any objection? Any object me talking to your son? No. Right? Any object no. me talking to your son, daughter? Object me talking to your daughter? Um, well, I have a few questions for them. Uh, will there be another baby? Are Hope and Bailey still seeing each other? Uh, do they want custody of their daughter, or have they moved on? We're going to answer all of those questions and more uh, when I sit down and talk to these children with a child. I'm wondering how you guys were able to sneak around and have sex. Where'd you tell him you were? My mom knew I was at his house. What made you think about having sex in the sixth grade? Hope was in the sixth grade when she got pregnant by her seventh grade boyfriend, Bailey. Yeah, you, you heard me right. She was 11 when she got pregnant. And now, they're children, and they have a baby. Now, here's their story. I dated Bailey for two years. I dated Hope for a summer. When I started dating Hope, I asked her why. She hit me with a bat. She just, like, says, because. We first kissed at the school park. It was about a year after I met Bailey before we slept together. I was 11 when I first slept with Bailey. I did not think I was old enough to have a baby. I slept with Bailey like six times. Being a father feels good. The kids at school call me baby daddy. Sometimes it's funny, but then there are like people that are mean about it. The first time I saw my baby, it was like weird. She was like the size of a football. I was scared that she wasn't gonna make it and I was happy she was here though. I get to see Ashlyn two times a week for an hour. When I'm with Ashlyn, I get to hold her and I get to play with her. I wanted to have a family picture with me, Bailey and Ashlyn. The lady that's supervising our visits is keeping me from taking a family picture with Bailey and Ashlyn. I dream about being able to have Ashlyn at home with me. What do you guys know about being here today? Why we're here, why we're talking to your parents and, and to the two of you? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Uh, could it be that you had a baby at 12 and 14? Would that be on your short list of possibilities? Uh, yeah. That's why we're talking? Yeah. Um, is this the first boy that you had sex with? Yes. And you said you done it six times? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, were you using any protection at all? Uh, no. no. Had anybody told you about it? about using protection? Yes. Did, did, you, did you want to get pregnant? No. Were you worried about it? No. But were you happy when you found out you were pregnant? No. Were you sad? Well, I was scared, what? Scared. Scared, uh-huh. How, how do you feel about the baby now? Um, I love her. Yeah. And like spend time with her? Mm-hmm. Do you have any idea what it costs to raise a baby? No. The cost of having a, a baby just taking care of, like, food and clothes and medicine and, you know, housing and all of that kind of stuff uh, is pretty expensive. It's like it's more than $1,000 a month just for the baby. It's like $14,000 a year. That's like a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. You would like to have another baby, though, right? No. You don't want to have another baby? Not anytime soon. Not anytime soon? H had you thought that you might want to? No. Because people were saying that you thought you'd like to have another baby because they might let you keep it now that you're a little bit older. No. I'm wondering how you guys were able to sneak around and have sex. Did you, did, where'd you tell them you were? What, where, where'd you say you were going? My mom knew I was at his house. Did she know that you were liking him? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
you were able to hide your pregnancy seven months before somebody knew you were pregnant. How were you able to do that? I didn't even know. How did you finally find out? My mom noticed. What did she say? She noticed my stomach getting bigger. She asked you if you were having sex, right? And you said, yeah. no, that's icky, I wouldn't do that? Yeah. So you, you lied about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your mother says that you get really angry. Is that true? Yeah. What makes you that way? I don't know. If you have that tendency and you don't know what causes it, then wouldn't you be at risk to hurt your baby? No. I wouldn't hurt the baby. She makes me happy. Well, but let me tell you, someone that's had a couple of babies, they're not always fun. They're not always cute and cuddly. They're sometimes really, really demanding when you really, really want to be sleeping or something like that. No. And if you mix that with an unstable temper, that could get really dangerous, couldn't it? I mean, do you see that? It could, but it wouldn't. Okay, well, the fact that you don't see it as a risk is, tells me a lot, and I understand because you're just a child. What made you think about having sex in the sixth grade? I don't know. What made you think about it? I don't know. Do y'all plan to continue to, to be boyfriend and girlfriend? No. You said no? How about you? You don't like each other anymore? No? Why not? I don't not? think he likes me anymore. Why, why don't you like her anymore? Um, I don't know. She's rude to me. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for talking to me. Bailey, thanks for talking to me, buddy. Okay. I'm going to give the parents my view on what I think needs to happen in this situation. Um, options are narrow. We'll be right back. Even though I think Lisa's a mom, it's not all her fault that Hope's is the way she is. It's partly my fault because I wasn't there. I did let Hope down. I wasn't a very good father. I think if I would have been there for her a little more, that she wouldn't end up pregnant. She wouldn't be the way she is today. I wouldn't be sitting here. Well, with the parents' permission, I just spoke with 12-year-old Hope and 14-year-old Bailey, um, the parents of seven-month-old baby Ashlyn. I talked to them backstage because I didn't want to bring them out here. And those of you at home, their faces were blurred or, and or they were shot from behind um, because they are children. Well, my Twitter feed obviously is just flooding with comments about what y'all are going through here. Draven512 said, what happened to the Barbie dolls and cupcake? Kids are growing up way too fast these days. It's sad. Delta Gamma Doll says, I guess we can take this as a lesson that we need to properly inform our kids of the consequences of sex. At this point, I don't know what to um, tell you. Um, with regard to hope, uh, you're clearly in over your head, right? You, you two don't have any idea how to cope with her. No, I don't. True? True. True. I mean, you, you're quick to criticize each other and argue back and forth here, but, you know, I always listen to guests to see what they have to say to me, you know, why they're here. Because, you know, guests that are motivated, guests that really have something they want for their ch children or their family, they step right up and say, I need help with this and this and this. I need advice on this and this and this. And we've been here the entire show, and I've heard you criticize each other and call each other names and uh, you know, shout things out from the audience and deny things and accuse each other. Not one of you has asked me one damn thing about what you could do to help them cope with what they're into now, what would be in the best interest of the baby, 
uh, what you can do to prevent a repeat of this. I mean, we've been here the entire time, and no, nobody has a question. Nobody has a thirst for knowledge or information here. Oh, I do. But I'm going to give some, if just to my viewers at home, who want to know what you do in a situation like this. It's chaos in these homes. You didn't know that your kids were getting together and having sex at this young age. Now we have this child um, that's living with an aunt, uh, probably by default, because CPS said she ain't staying here. Uh, just get her out. And so what do you do? Let, let's talk first about this side. Um, you guys acknowledge that you're, you're out of control here uh, of your daughter, correct? Yes. You, you, you said, I, I can't parent her, don't know what to do, I'm completely out of control. Um, I, I talked to Bailey, and um, he seems to be um, pretty laid back about the whole thing. I don't know what dialogue y'all have had with him, but I don't think any of it's registered. Bailey has a learning disability. I understand that. I knew that before we got here. And um, he has not been properly diagnosed. We have tried. It's un inconclusive. I would honestly like to get help to see if he is autistic because it runs in, in on her side of the family. He cannot tie his shoes, but he can put a motor only a genius could put together without direction. He likes math and numbers, and that's a sign, too. Yeah, and sex. Well, <laughs> far as I know, that was peer pressure, and... He's a victim? Oh my God. Well, that's what he... Uh, told my grandson anyway. Wow. So I'm... Wow. That's yeah, what was said. Okay. I do think Bailey needs some professional help yes, that sir. you can't give him. Um, and so I am going to make arrangements for him to be properly evaluated. And then once you have that piece of information, I'm not sure what you're going to do different about it. Um, and with regard to hope, Honest to God, I feel like I could stop a car at random out on Melrose and come up with a better chance of her turning the corner than leaving her with the two of you. I'm just you. telling you, I just don't think you know what to do. You just don't, you're in over your head. And, you, and you've said, can't do it. She needs some support. She needs some help. She needs to be out of this situation. So I have arranged to offer you to have a team of experts work with her from the Center for Discovery. And um, this is a, a situation that would take her out of your home and put her into a structured environment where she can shake free <laughs> of the toxicity in this home. And Dr. Matthew Polachek, program director, is here. Uh, Matt, what do you think? Yeah, she'd be a great fit. Um, we haven't... She'd be a great fit for our, um, an all-girls facility um, with an all-female staff. So, And um, kind of focusing on building a healthy identity as a 12-year-old versus, uh, you know, some, what's, what's going on. I, I can tell you that um, while she's gone, you all have some serious soul-searching to do. If you agree that she needs to go, uh, I'm telling you I have confidence in this program. Uh, Dr. Polachek is here and, and uh, can answer your questions about it. But what do you think about that? I would love that. What, what do you think about it? Um, that's what we, um, we're hoping would happen. <clears throat> if she would get some kind of help. We've made this offer. It will be your job to stand shoulder to shoulder stop your bickering back and forth and let her know this is non-optional that she go to this program and uh, you can ask Dr. Polachek questions about it but you should be giving him a real big thank you and a bit of support. Special thanks to Dr. Jennifer Berman 
uh, you can see her on The Doctors. We'll see you next time. <laughs>